getting rid of man boobs is today's podcast here on the Jody Bunting podcast. Today we have Johnny Ackley, who is a PT, a strength and conditioning coach at Everlast Gym in Derby, who also specializes doing online programs for strength and fat loss. Hi, Johnny. How you doing? How you doing, Jody? You're right. I'm great. Thank you very much. Now, just to let everybody know how I know Johnny, he actually used to be my PT of choice, my own personal trainer when I could afford it. Um, And the reason I chose Johnny is because he is the real deal. You know, he's not like this personal trainer that is just an Instagram personal trainer. He, He actually has a personal interest in fitness, sports and stuff like that. Don't you, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the compliment. Yeah, it's really nice to say of you. <laughs> Just tell people as well what you actually do, because you do a bit of climbing, you do all sorts of sports as well. Yeah, so at this moment in time, um, strength and conditioning is generally my main sport. So that would be anything from for heavy weights to jumping and plyometrics, so lots of gymnast type movements. And I also, yeah, as I do indoor bouldering, climbing, and I also do Muay Thai, which is a type of martial arts that the Thai people do, similar to kickboxing. So, yeah, quite a few different ranges at the moment, but any more and I'll probably end up hurting myself. So got to keep it, got to keep it controlled. <laughs> And unlike the other personal trainers that work at Everlast, especially in Derby next to Pride Park, you don't go to Greg's very often. You eat uh, quite well and, you know, you're actually the real deal. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, for, for the like, maybe I'm probably a little bit older than some of the personal trainers around now. Um, over the years, I've learned how to teach myself to not only cook food that is good for you but food that I would prefer to eat so if I went to somewhere like Greg's now for instance I would not enjoy it if that makes sense so it it, I could make it myself if that makes sense so yeah it'd be it's quite enjoyable that way and then finally the last compliment I'll give you before we get Mm -hmm. into it you've got something up here haven't you Johnny you actually know the nuts and bolts of exercise nutrition lifestyle you know it's not just about going to the gym and lifting some weights Mm -hmm. You know, there is science behind it as well, which I think why you're so successful, because people do just by having a five minute chat with you, you actually know what you're talking oh, about. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll agree. <laughs> I don't know if that's a <laughs> cocky thing to say, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> but again, you, you have the own, your own personal interest in finding out why, you know, why the body does what it does, why food does what it does again, which makes a great personal trainer. Yeah, a, a total investment in myself and others when it comes to the health and fitness. It's not just about looking good, but it's about feeling good. And it's about being able to perform in any way, shape or form they like. So, yeah, everyone has differences with their body, but it's learning how to work your body the best way. Yeah. Right. So let's get into our big subject today, which is how to get rid of man boobs for for those men out there. And actually, it could apply to women out there as well who want to shrink the size of their chest. So, Johnny, over to you. What could we do? Is there anything specific? Okay. uh, so man boobs or gynomastia, which it can be also known as uh, gyno, is something where particularly in men it's when adipose tissue where fat builds over the muscle and essentially it it could be due to a couple of reasons uh one being you know a little bit overweight and maybe lifestyle choices from food and maybe not regular exercise and the other one could actually be uh, low testosterone which uh is like a bit of a hormone imbalance um and the body is producing more estrogen um progesterone uh, which you would normally find in women so the body will be providing more estrogen to it so men could get more like a similar look to how females would look with their breasts and essentially and i know that um, it's coming up to valentine's day very soon uh, and is valentine's day potentially as we film this yeah um one of the ways to drive up um testosterone <laughs> without even going into too much detail is is, is sex <laughs> yeah and yeah and it, it sex is very very good for testosterone boosting it's very very good for um the 
stress release that a lot of people get when we have a high amount of stress in our body it produces a lot of adrenaline that can actually lower testosterone as well so stress levels and lots of you know good times can also help uh, actually reduce man breasts uh, funnily enough without any kind of interaction of thinking anything at the gym or anything like that that's just one way of doing it so yeah i don't know if that was something you knew about already or yeah, <laughs> partaking you know there's there's loads of ways to actually up your testosterone and, and like you said it's not as hard as people might think no no not at all um it, and of course obviously i would say exercise um resistance training in particular would be one of the main ways to reduce body fat over time with a good diet and it the 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 higher amount of weight that you do the more resistance the higher the testosterone goes up and in particular for guys if you were to have a partner to train with uh, whether you fancied them or not um if you had a partner to train with, it would produce higher testosterone because competition is actually, or healthy competition can actually boost it up as well. So going with a friend, going with someone who's like-minded can actually really help improve your testosterone, which yet again will over time shrink these down just by a side effect, but also it will change the chemistry in your body. Um, if we wanted to look at it from a dietary perspective, um, what we really want to look at is processed foods um so particularly processed foods with high amounts of uh oil sunflower oil rapeseed oil um the type of things that you would find in crisps and uh sun you know sunflower oil is found in chips and those type of things particularly if you buy them pre-made they will actually degrade the cells in the body and it will lower testosterone and can produce uh, different features on a man that maybe is less desired. So one of the things you can do in order to reduce man boobs, apart from obviously the good diet, it, it's to just reduce the amount of processed foods you eat and just eat more whole foods, which it, obviously that makes sense. But the particular foods that we want to look for are high amounts of vitamin D or D3, uh, which you can actually get from natural sunlight, which is hard to get at the moment. But if you can supplement that, if you're struggling to get it, um, you can find that a little bit that in beef. When it comes to magnesium, that can help regulate testosterone as well and obviously get the body to look in better shape. You can get that from dark chocolate of all things. Uh, so a little bit of something you enjoy. Uh, leafy greens, um, pumpkin seeds, these all, all these type of things can go into like a porridge in the morning, you know, a bit of fruit to go there to add a bit of flavor and a bit of color. And finally, if we looked at um, other variation of like zinc, zinc can be found in many different foods as well, but you can supplement all these. Obviously, if you're quite new to diet and you're new to training and these type of things, just throwing a load of new food in and getting rid of a load of food at once can be quite difficult. So my recommendation is maybe try and find some supplementation first and then build in the lifestyle gradually over time. And just to touch back on that thing about the whole sex drive thing, if mm. if you are, again, feeling like your libido is, is lower than it should be, mm -hmm. this is where, again, exercise and upping that testosterone will not only help you physically, but will also mm. help you, you know, mentally and get your sex drive where it should be. So mm. we should be recommending, maybe, if you want to have great sex on Valentine's Day, take your partner to the gym, give them a little bit of dark chocolate, and off you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of my clients, uh, particularly, it's not just resistance training, but cardiovascular training as well. And like you say, doing it together is a great way to introduce your partner to exercise with you, makes you more like-minded. And of course, yeah, I'm at, some of my clients, they do talk about when they've started exercising, particularly with the resistance training, their sex drive has massively gone up and it's helped the relationship too. So yeah, there's there's many upsides to that particular area. Um, yeah. Which is why me and Johnny know lots of couples that either got together or broken up at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, not all people are meant to work out together as well, but as long as you get these side effects of it. Um, Particularly when it comes to weight training, if you wanted to focus on the chest, um, if it was some area that you really wanted to work on, um, a lot of chest, people would assume it's a lot of chest movements to develop the chest, which is true, like bench press, 
So that's barbell bench press, there's dumbbell bench press, there's push-ups if, you work, if you're working from home and you haven't got time to go to the gym. Yeah. Um, there are a cable variations that you could do as well, which will develop different areas of the chest. However, a lot of people don't realize that testosterone-driven boosting actually comes from the legs. So doing lots of leg movements will also slim these out too. So squats, deadlifts, heavy components where it drives the testosterone up. And it always helps to have someone that maybe if you are single that you fancy in the gym. So you can you can uh, kind of use that life force, as one would say. <laughs> Naturally uh, get your testosterone up just by through yeah. your eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's actually scientifically proven um, that having people around you that you may be interested in to increase your testosterone because yeah again I think this specifically with men this healthy competition of finding someone to to date or further it's it's uh, it's a great way to increase the testosterone just by essentially trying to show off I think <laughs> Johnny now I'm seeing why I'm personally attracted to go in these back street gyms that got all the pictures of the big bodybuilders on the wall <laughs> that's doing it for me <laughs> Yeah, and it's probably one of the reasons why you enjoy going there, and <laughs> I can I can totally see why. <laughs> right. So, um, just to talk about that misconception of fat as well, because it is impossible, mm. isn't it, actually, to work specifically on one area to get rid of the fat. Correct. Yeah, it's yes. actually about the bigger picture, isn't it, and actually improving the muscle rather than getting rid of the fat. Yeah, I mean, as you build more muscle and obviously you're eating the right foods and a high amount of protein your body when it breaks down and builds back up will try and prioritize muscle more than keeping the fat it will try and see what's essential to keep and get rid of and if you're exercising fairly regularly and you're doing a lot of resistance training your body will recognize that maybe fat isn't the main source that you need right now and that you need to, to have the muscle in order to maintain your lifestyle so if you would focus on building muscle, definitely the fat would reduce over time. It isn't about necessarily doing lots of cardiovascular work, but that does also help with heart health and blood circulation. So that will also produce some good results as well. So I'm not saying don't just, you know, do resistance training and just do weights. There's definitely advantages to doing cardiovascular work. Because you have to remember your heart at the end of the day is a muscle, isn't it? And you've got to work it like you would your biceps, your triceps, stuff like that. Yeah. And if you want to last in the bedroom, <laughs> all about <laughs> cardio. <laughs> it's all about the cardio. <laughs> We've all got power. But we need the cardio to go with it. So. <laughs> so say somebody who does want to improve their body shape, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just or maybe they don't want to improve the way they look. You know, mm -hmm. there's lots of other benefits of having a strong heart and not having man breasts and stuff like that, isn't there? Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, I mean, as far as most common diseases go now and, and most illnesses, if you were to regular exercise and resistance training, of course, in line with a good diet, you'll find yourself just in day to day life more energetic. You'll probably be able to sleep better, uh, which of course will lead to a longer life. And you'll feel happier overall. Mentally, you'll just be in a much better place. So most people don't look at the mental aspect of things when it comes to exercise and they don't see always the progress they want to see in the gym immediately, but they haven't recognized all the mental gains they've got. So the first thing I would recommend to do, if, if you're new to exercise, getting into the gym and just enjoying doing anything and just getting the heart rate going and just feeling happier in general, because that will be the first side effect that you'll get from exercise. And now before we talk about the broader side of uh, diet and fitness and stuff like that, I just want to ask you how you personally got into fitness. Okay. Um, I'm the youngest of six. So I've been brought up in a family where two older brothers, three older sisters, and essentially we've always been pitted up against each other um, when it comes to sports, uh, martial arts, judo, football, rugby, whichever, whichever is. And being the, the, the runt of the family, the little one, <laughs> I was always left behind, you know, being the youngest. And I just wanted to just keep up with my brothers. And that was probably the main thing as it's just trying to one day beat them at something. Um, I was as a younger person, probably a little bit undersized. So 
I had to use this more than my body to have the advantage. And yeah, so since since a very young age, I've been involved in sports, but predominantly it was football as a kid. And then it moved into martial arts and then eventually onto the gym where you now know me mainly, mainly for. <laughs> yes. And have you had any sort of weight issues yourself? Yeah, so all the way through childhood, maybe till about the age of 19, uh, I was always very sporty, um, very, very kind of athletic when it came to basketball, football, rugby, but I was extremely undersized and the doctors were consistently telling me, you need to put on weight, you're not eating enough food, you're anorexic. And I'm like, look, I'm eating loads of food. Um, honestly, I, I'm, I'm eating twice the amount of people my age and they just didn't believe me which was kind of weird because I was just like, well, I'm, maybe I've just got a really fast metabolism. I didn't know. Um, but someone recommended me to start resistance training. And I was a bit under the impression at the time, you know, when I was at like 18, 19, that it was just for meatheads and, you know, numb schools as we call them back yeah. then. Um, so I, I got into resistance training. I got into weight training and lo and behold, after a bit of time, my body changed and I got more shape and more size, but it was definitely a, a process. And, and compared to some guys in the gym, I've had to work really hard just to build up any bit of size. Um, so yeah, I've always had to use my cunning, my technique uh, to try and like get the advantage over people when it came to sports rather than just muscling through everyone. <laughs> so yeah, for a long time, I was undersized. And did you personally, you know, increase your protein or anything like that nutritionally as well to start building muscle? I have to admit, I wasn't big on the nutritional side when I was a kid. Uh, and, and yeah. even as a young adult getting into the gym, like everyone, I started off not knowing fully the extent of why diet and nutrition was such a big thing. Um, YouTube and Instagram and all these things weren't as available. So it was just a case of guy in the gym says, buy this tub of protein and just eat it how much whatever fits in your mouth so <laughs> you learn over time what is the right amount uh, just by if you eat too much it doesn't digest too well and we've all know probably been there and if you eat too little you don't really see much progress so yeah it, there, there was no no process at the time for me to understand what to do but as time went on and I, I read lots more books more journals more uh, when podcasts became available and these things, I, I learned so much more. It's an amalgamation of things over time. So I would, I would say to anyone starting out, you know, try a person out, try a video out, you know, give it a go for a while, you know, if they recommend a protein amount. And if it's not working for you, you can adjust it and maybe listen to other people's points of view. But if you're taking too many points of view, it can be quite confusing. So that would be my advice for anyone that's just starting out. And that's the annoying thing, isn't it? Because what works for one completely doesn't work for the other. So it really is trial and error with these things. Yes. And dietary lifestyle differences. So, for instance, I know that you've had Phoebe on the podcast um, and she is a vegan. So her lifestyle and my lifestyle in terms of what we eat and what we do and how we do it are going to be two very different things. So, you know, I I, I adore anyone that, that sticks to a lifestyle and, and likes what they do and I would never tell them to eat anything that they that they don't want to do so yeah it's it's a, it's a tough one to challenge around but it, it, over time you've got to try new foods I would say foods that you yeah. say as a kid you didn't enjoy maybe and then reintroduce them one bit at a time and, and you'll probably find that you like things now as an adult because your taste buds do change so when you see my daughter Phoebe at the gym tucking into yeah. a tofu lentil or chickpea curry does it excite you johnny do you think oh i'd love a bit of that <laughs> um i mean not so much <laughs> but there are certain advantages to eating beans and legumes there's lots of protein in them and it's very high in fiber so there are certain aspects of veganism that i would agree with um when it comes to it, I mean, we all probably eat about 60, 70 percent vegan food anyway, if we, you know, some form of greens and rice and lentils and stuff. So, yeah, I'm totally behind it. Uh, it's just that for me, it doesn't seem to work because I think just the amount I have to eat would be a lot more if I was a vegan. So yeah. if your lifestyle is along those kind of lines where you have like a more of a strict background, you would 
not necessarily be hold back, but you would find yourself finding it harder to, to work around. So yeah, if you want advice or dietary advice, anyone wants an advice, then you probably want to speak to someone who lives that lifestyle more, more so than like the general guy. Because we don't want to diss the vegans, but to be honest, Johnny, it's easier to be a carnivore. You can get so much more protein from animals, can't you? Yes. Um, about 70% of our protein, um, even though it's about 30% of our food, comes from animals. And and then the rest of it usually comes from dietary fats like cheese and milk. So it's so much more difficult. And I do appreciate that vegans have a good ethic and a good lifestyle yeah. and, and the majority of them really make sure to be on point and i think that's one thing that you could take away if you were an omnivore or carnivore is to maybe work some vegetables in there and kind of let them digest the, the meats better um and you would probably find that you've got the combination of the two is probably the best way this is why i love doing the January myself because it just made me eat more vegetables eat more fiber mm which again, improve my skin, improve my digestion. Yeah, you know, I think it is good to go through these different stages. And, you know, this thing, meat free Monday, you know, just to do mm. once a week with less meat, I think is also a, a helpful option. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's trying new recipes that you maybe wouldn't try. Lots of Indian recipes are vegetarian and a couple of my Indian clients have recommended many things to me. And yeah, I've loved them. I mean, I still do add meat to them every now and again, but... <laughs> They are nice without. I just like the extra protein for for my uh, for my workouts. So, me and Phoebe have had these vegan meals from uh, Smalls, this Smalls kitchen in Derby, and oh, Phoebe, yeah. Phoebe's like been looking at them, and it says like twenty grams of protein. She's like laughed out loud because she's like, "That's not enough protein for me," and she gets <laughs> a slab of tofu out and adds those in. So, yeah, you know, it is like you said, it is harder, but it's not impossible. I think that's the the point to make, isn't it? Variety is definitely the key when it comes to veganism. Um, but every single meat, that, so there's a nine essential amino acids the body cannot produce. And every single meat has all that meets all those nine essential amino acid needs. Whereas vegetable or vegetarian versions um, don't always have the full nine essential amino acids. So you have to mix and match to make all nine. So like chickpeas and lentils and stuff, if you add them all together, it will create the full profile so your body can you know work so much better from the brain to the downstairs area to the heart to everything yeah um and of course muscle recovery uh so yeah so it's it is a much much easier lifestyle to be um a meat eater than a than a vegan but you can do it 100 percent Right, now we're going to come back to nutrition in a minute, but let's touch yeah. back on fitness. So, for instance, mm -hmm. if you have a new client or just general advice for anybody getting into strength, conditioning, fitness, what is your, your initial advice? If it, it, it entirely dependent on goal, but let's say, for instance, their goal was to lose weight and to lose uh, like areas, man boobs, whatever, is to, first of all, be patient. Um if you go for a 12 week transformation, the likelihood is after that 12 weeks, you haven't built in the processes to keep that all off because you, you, your lifestyle has changed so drastically. You will at some point taper off and probably come back to doing the opposite thing and end up putting the weight back on. So being more consistent over time as opposed to looking for that immediate goal would be ideal um if your goal is to lose weight and like you said earlier you cannot spot check fat so if you worked on your arms you're not going to lose weight off your arms you'll just gain muscle and if you've got fat there it will still show pretty much the same so if you're genetically inclined to hold more here on on the boobs then that will probably be the last place it will come off so you have to be really patient when it comes to fat loss and my recommendation is just take one day at a time um You've got to enjoy yourself, take one day at a time, but we'll find exercises that you enjoy and we'll work on weaknesses as well that will develop you over time. Just make sure that you enjoy it. And when it comes to actually personal training, mm -hmm. do you think this is, because you mentioned there about tapering off, you know, your lifestyle, your your gym routines. Do you think this is where having a personal trainer is real, the, the key point, because it does keep you motivated to keep going? Hmm. I think there's a certain amount of motivation with a trainer. 
when the motivation dips, you've got a trainer to hold you accountable um, or give you the tools to, to, to hold yourself accountable for yourself. So if you do have a trainer and they get you to the point where you can be really disciplined and accountable for yourself, you'll no longer need that trainer, but you've got all the tools you need therefore to go forward. And if you're a person that just likes to have someone around who just helps you through planning, helps you with the workouts, tells you how to do it, what to do, and you just don't want to have the headspace to learn about all yourself it's much easier to have a trainer so yeah there's definite advantages and to be honest it's not all just about diet and fitness when it comes to personal trainer you have a lot of clients who are just lonely they're bored in the gym they want somebody to chat to don't they johnny yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i, I I wouldn't. I would accept the money for just to, just talking, but you know, it's <laughs> there's probably better people out there than me for that. So <laughs> I don't know. You've got some chat. You have Johnny. Oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> right. So the other big thing in the gym, which is kind of my background, is group mm -hmm. fitness. What kind mm -hmm. of you know benefits and and good things have you seen within group fitness in gyms? Because cro CrossFit is a big thing now, which is also yeah. a, a, a group fitness, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think when it comes to group fitness, it's mainly the social aspect. Um, a lot of people who are new to the gym in January who go on the treadmill, they don't exercise with anyone. They all lose motivation really quickly. Now, the classes are a great social aspect. They, they're dynamic. They have lots of different styles of classes. So you're learning new things about your body all the time. Everyone's like-minded. We all seem to have a good time dancing, having a laugh. Um, when it comes to the social aspect, I would say that's one of the biggest reasons why most people stay at the gym. Um, if you're a lone wolf, someone who likes to be on their own, then fair enough, maybe those aren't for you. But I would say the majority of people who do classes generally stay a lot longer than people that just do the general gym. And for people who maybe can't afford a personal trainer, but, you know, really mm -hmm. want to get serious about it. Do you mm -hmm. think it's worth booking in, you know, for a one time session set up with a personal trainer or can you find good advice online? Is it all about cardio? Is it all about strength? You know, it's a bit of a minefield when it comes to starting exercise. What what advice yeah. do you give for somebody who can't afford a personal trainer? Um, if someone can't afford a personal training they just wanted to do it an hour and let's say they want to learn resistance training or weight training having that personal trainer just set them up with a one-time workout where they can do that consistently um like you say it's a minefield of exercises to learn and there's so many techniques and variations but but just by breaking it down some simple machines a couple of uh free weights so a barbell and a dumbbell and just telling them, right, stick to these five or six exercises for the next 12 weeks, that's three months, and just work at these fundamentals. You'll still get a better body. You can still do your cardio on the side. Anyone can kind of go for a swim, go on the treadmill, that type of stuff in the meantime. And after that, maybe uh, three months, if you still think, hmm, I'm getting some good progress, maybe I'll just do a top up and just do one every few months. And then you can just learn a little bit over time. Like you say, you can go online, the only downside I would say to going online, there's so many different people saying so many different things that it can get confusing. So if someone was to able just to write you a simple plan and go, there you go, there's five or six exercises, do that. I would recommend that for sure. Keep it simple. And these people online, they don't even just say different things. They say the polar opposites, don't they, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you kind of had that yourself? Have you seen a lot of the polar opposites with it then? Well, you know, there's some people out there that say just do strength training. Don't do any cardio <laughs> whatsoever. And then there's other personal trainers. It's all about the cardio. Just get your heart and everything else will fall into shape. You know, so like you said, it is good to, to sit down with somebody, even if it's just a one off session. Talk <laughs> about what you want and talk about what you enjoy as well, because I personally <laughs> hate cardio and I hate yeah. weights as well, Johnny, to be honest. <laughs> yeah and i think yeah first of all it's finding what you enjoy when it comes to down to it if you don't enjoy it you won't do it so um you have to find a variation of something that maybe you don't enjoy as much and just try and find something that you can enjoy and stick to um, and that's one of the reasons why the majority of people that stay in the gym find a routine that they enjoy and i, I would say an average routine is much better than a routine you don't turn up to so 100 <laughs> percent. yeah yeah you'll find polar opposites 
because there's a couple of reasons why you'll find polar opposites. One, they enjoy it more and they get very biased and defensive towards their particular style of training. And two, if there's a particular product they want to sell, of course, they're going to say that the other person's product isn't as good and you should buy their product. It's just typical competition. Um, I, I like to be transparent and honest. I don't sell anything I wouldn't do myself or I don't sell anything that I think is a fad. I'll always try and promote health first. And then, yeah, again, if you want to build big, big muscle, it's not going to be good to, to go running. So some of them are right, but they're not explaining it well enough. Would that be yeah. some? Yeah. Not looking yeah. at the big picture and thinking about cash and business, I think, is the, the truth, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, we all have to earn money but yeah try and do it at the, not at the expense of other people's health so <laughs> right now let's go back to nutrition so again general nutritional advice is it all about protein if you're trying to build muscle and you're prioritizing weightlifting um specifically just for building muscle protein synthesis is yes on the forefront of of building muscle if you're just trying to stay healthy and lean and you're not bothered about building massive amounts of size it's not as important so if you are someone who is just trying to just generally get a little bit better my advice to you is have 100 grams of protein uh, for a man no more really is necessary if you're trying to gain lots and lots of muscle depending on the, the size of the man and, and the height, um, I would recommend probably around about 140 to 180 grams per day, any more and you just won't absorb a lot of it. So how you get that protein is entirely up to you. The other thing I heard as well, that if you have too much protein, it actually then turns back into carbohydrates. So you might as well have just had some carbs, which are a lot cheaper. Oh, I've not heard that, that particular, particular one. Um, uh, carbohydrates are a glycogen, so they are a type of glucose that they they what they do is they replenish the muscles. So they are good for exercise and they're good for um, energy in general. Um, but most protein you don't absorb is going to be excreted out. So you'll just have toilet issues basically. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's just getting enough, but obviously the same as everything, really, just not having yeah. too much. Although, to be honest, yeah. there's not many people that have found that are eating too much protein because it's very hard to do, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, unless you're just eating mounds and mounds of meat and uh, beans and legumes, you're probably not getting enough adequate protein in. So prioritizing that within your diet is definitely part of the process of building the building block for building muscles. And talking about carbs and, you know, there's the big keto sensation at the moment as well. Do you think it's essential for most people to cut their carbs? I would say personally, it ketones or the, 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 the keto diet is very good for people who are largely overweight. And what it, what it will do as they eat less and less food or to almost no food, they'll go into ketosis, which will uh, then it will kind of what I call the computer reboot. So yeah. it will turn turn off the system, it will reset it and any kind of like stomach issues you had or like digestive issues, it will reset it. And then your body will burn into fat stores, uh, the ketones in order to reduce the fat over time. Obviously that's a, not a long-term solution. That's just something that will help you restart your body, um, get it back to metabolic normal processes, then in, reintroduce a good healthy diet from there. When it comes to carbohydrate intake, it's brilliant for sports. So if you're someone who is predominantly in sports and you need that for performance, carbohydrates is definitely better. So I would recommend more carbohydrates if you're an athlete or someone who needs to perform in the gym. And this is why like runners and marathon runners, you actually see them eating jelly babies and these things yeah. where you'd think, you know, that's crazy. Why are these sports people having pure sugar? But they need it, don't they? Oh, yeah. They burn through it so fast. Um, most people burn through all their sugars within 90 minutes of training. That's why they'll, you'll see people with Lucozades and power sports and all these type of things. So it will build the sugars back up so they, they can just keep going for longer without having to eat mounds of food. The other question I get asked when people start working out is, do I need a pre-workout? Do I need a protein shake after the workout? 
You know, it's it's a joke, isn't it, Johnny? You actually don't need any of these things. No, not at all. Um, as long as you eat within about two to four hours after eating, it doesn't matter what the protein source is. As long as you get it in, that's perfectly fine. So you can wait a whole four hours and you're not going to lose your anabolic window, which is, yeah, again, I think it's a sales point to get protein companies to, to yeah. get you to eat as much as possible. Pre-workouts, essentially, there are some ingredients in there that are quite helpful, but predominantly the reason why you're getting so twitchy and edgy is, is the caffeine. Yeah. So you could just reach for a cup of coffee if you wanted to. My daughter's told me that you've got a cafetiere at the gym now. Yes, yes, we do like a cafetiere. Um, so you, you personally I, recommend a bit of caffeine before a workout, eh? There, yes, yes and no. And I, I'll go into a specific. So I don't have any caffeine after 12 p.m. because it messes with your sleep cycle. Yes. So I'll go decaf after that point. Um, but up until that point, I'll have three or four coffees and that'll do me for the whole day, no matter what time I work out. So caffeine isn't the best long term solution because all the gains you get from the working out and all the strength you get will be negated by the lack of sleep later on when you've got too much caffeine in your body. So you won't get that deep sleep that your body needs. You won't recover. And that's way more important than any caffeine before a workout. Yeah. Oh, I love the detail you give. Really, Johnny, this is good. <laughs> thank you and uh, we've discussed in length personally about protein shakes and the best ones and stuff like that but can, if if i always think they're good for people who are are in a rush and if they're mm -hmm. gonna eat they're gonna eat something crap then on that level mm -hmm. a protein shake is probably quite good where oh, do you think what are the best protein shakes out there okay so the best ones of you know, the purest ones like optimum nutrition they're going to be quite pricey. Um, the powders are much thinner and much easier to digest. Um, but my go-to is my protein, um, just because yeah. they're quite they're quite a lot cheaper. But there are two various variations of of whey protein you can get. There's whey protein, which is the cheap one, and there's whey protein isolate. So if you're lactose intolerant or if you have some issues towards whey, like a milk form, isolate is the best one to go for. Um, isolate actually they take the lactose enzyme out which actually is one of the reasons why people get upset stomachs in the first place so if you're lactose intolerant go for whey isolate you're le much less likely to have digestive issues great i didn't know that actually so that's good no no problem can you also tell us about creatine because i've heard a lot of people bang on about this mm -hmm. uh, creatine monohydrate that's adenosine triphosphate so this is a naturally occurring thing in the body and the body can only produce so much. So you do, if you're trying to build more muscle and, and have more energy uh, and build more strength, creatine monohydrate is definitely the go-to. Out of all the supplements, that's the number one supplement that actually is proven to work. So yeah, you, you'll probably find that if you have creatine monohydrate, one scoop a day, there's no cycling you can you can do one scoop a day for the rest of your life because it's a naturally reoccurring thing in the body it what it will do is it will help build more water in the muscle cells and it will just help you be a little bit stronger and have a little bit more energy so it probably produces about seven percent increase in strength at the best so for somebody who does want to you know get bigger muscles get bigger size mm -hmm. actually that one is useful yeah absolutely it won't actually build you the muscle but it will help you in the gym to get more effort out in in the gym so even if you're an athlete who's just trying to run faster it'll be even helpful in that to just build a little bit more endurance right now we're going to have a little chat about lifestyle so you mentioned sleep earlier uh you know yeah. digestion we all know that's so important as well what other lifestyle tips do you give to your clients okay um there is a natural sleep cycle called the circadian rhythm. Now, every adult has a similar circadian rhythm. So over a 24 hour period um, from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., which is about an eight hour time window, that is the perfect time for fully grown adults who are usually over 25 to sleep to. And you may have noticed a lot of people get a lull period in the day, like between 12 and three. That's actually also a natural sleep cycle. We can sleep around about half an hour to an hour during that time as well. Um, that is in all humans built within, no matter where in the world you're from. So my recommendation is if you're going to go to sleep, 
try and get into bed for half past nine. I know that's that early for a lot of people, um, but your sleep cycle will be much better. It goes with the natural rhythm of your sleep. And then you'll wake up naturally around 6 a.m. not need an alarm or caffeine necessarily. Um, if you sleep during that period of time, you'll find yourself much, much happier and much more energetic. And it's just, it's so nice not to wake up to the sound of an alarm as well. You know, even just stress yeah. level wise and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's so many people who have the low sound alarms. So if they, if you're not naturally waking up, it's having an alarm that, that slowly builds in volume rather than that blaring, you know. So having something to nice to wake up to can really set off your day as well. So I sometimes have like classical music or something come on. I am normally awake before my alarm, but I always set it just in case. So we don't want to let the train the uh, clients down, do we? No, not at all. <laughs> so with regards to like distressing and relaxation and stuff like that, do you personally find or do you recommend things like yoga, Pilates, meditation, breathing work? You know, there's lots to lifestyle, isn't there? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. And I would say always yet again, it's like exercise. Find something you enjoy doing. So if you were going to sleep, some people enjoy reading before bed. Some people enjoy doing a jigsaw. It's something that's not on the electronics, basically. Uh, like you say, some people enjoy doing meditation and meditation has been shown in many clinical studies to reduce stress, to reduce cortisol, the stress hormone. And deep breathing helps you gather your thoughts. So if you've got a lot of thoughts going on, uh, it will help you quiet them down to then put an actionable play in it. Obviously, if you're just quieting them down and then don't do anything about the thoughts, then you're going to be in the same issue the next day. But my recommendation is if you're a person who struggles to sleep at night and you've got lots of thoughts racing, one of the things I get some of my clients to do to sleep better, apart from like, you know, some of the things I mentioned, uh, even breathing, is record some of your issues or even write it down because you're saving a log of it. So you don't have to remember it. And also it's actually really de-stressing to write these issues down and, or even just say them out loud. So you've got them on a recording. You can even play them back if you wish, but I've noticed my clients stress levels go down and they perform much better in the gym and actually at work for that matter. And it doesn't have to be, um, you know, you don't have to write a journal every single day. Like you said, just typing it into your phone, getting those thoughts out mm. there are just so helpful, aren't they? Uh, yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. Now, when we to say the word meditation, a lot of people think, you know, sitting on a cushion in a Buddhist retreat. But actually, yeah. you know, you live in Ashbourne. I live out here in Hatton. Just going for a walk in nature is also a form of uh, meditation, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, like you say, in, in nature, the, there's there's actual studies to show that if you go barefoot in the forest, that de-stresses de you way more than like, you know, just going for a general walk. So um, going into your barefoot and feeling nature is also one of the ways to de-stress as well. It kind of reintegrates with the ground, gets all the minerals into your feet. So there's a lot of things you can do to de-stress. And like you say, whether you live in the city or live elsewhere, just going for a walk is really good for the uh, for the headspace uh, myself personally I have done some Buddhism because I like to try everything out and it, it, it is helpful it's a helpful tool it it worked 50% of the time for me which is better than no percent so yeah. you'll find it's not for everyone but at least you'll be able to take something away from it so my recommendation is you know try a form of Buddhism try a form of meditation try something out and then even if it's just a deep practice, uh, deep breathing practice at night, it doesn't have to be like a whole hymns and all this stuff. Just try a sort of variation that you enjoy and stick to that. Have you tried the Torah Center, by the way, near me at that, That's the one, yeah. Yeah, that's where I've been a few, fair few times, yeah. Great, it is great. They still do their lunchtime meditation, which is just yeah. 20 minutes, non-religious, and normally it is breathing, like you said. So it's a great way to start for people, isn't it? 100%, yeah. Free, yeah, it's free of charge, isn't it? So they um and then you can just go for a nice coffee afterwards it's out in the countryside so you know it's, if it's early enough on the day you can have that coffee it's called the world peace cafe well, could so there nice. be anything more worthwhile doing <laughs> <laughs> they're volunteers as well aren't they the people yeah, that work they are. In yeah yeah even the people that lead most of the people that lead the meditation are also volunteers that kind of just tour yeah. the meditation centers and stuff so 
Nice. Right. I know this is a hard task to do, but we're going to do your top three tips then, kind of summarise all what we've been talking about in this podcast. Mm -hmm. So to get rid of man boobs, what are the top three tips, Johnny? Uh, the top three tips is to exercise with resistance training, um, lots of sex and good diet. <laughs> love it. Absolutely <laughs> love that. OK, <laughs> those are the top three tips. Now, it is a few days away from Valentine's. Now, I don't know about you, Johnny, but I've been to Poundland and I bought myself an engagement ring just in case. I get you never know. You never know when the man of my life is going to uh, roll up. But I wanted to ask you, what are your plans for Valentine's Day? Do you even believe in it? I I like the fact that other people enjoy it. And I obviously love my girlfriend very much, but I treat her like every day is Valentine's Day. <laughs> You're breaking hearts, Johnny. <laughs> Don't ask her that, though, because she'll disagree. <laughs> Do you think she'll be popping to Marks and Spencers and buying you the, the Valentine's special three-course meal? I hope so. <laughs> Rump steak is on offer. That is definitely a good thing to celebrate, isn't it? Best way to the man's heart, that. <laughs> Great. So if people want to find more out about Johnny, the strength coach, how can they do it? Okay. Uh, yeah, so... I have an Instagram page called Johnny the Strength Coach, and I have a YouTube page uh, called Grow Strength NX, um, which is a different name, but um, it is going to be changed to Johnny the Strength Coach soon. So uh, it's all in line. So just any platforms, just Johnny the Strength Coach. And you do offer personal training at Everlasting Derby as well, don't you? You're a personal trainer base there. Yeah, correct. One to one personal training. Anyone can come in if they wish. Um, you don't have to be a member there. And I also teach um, on once, uh, sorry, online as well. So I do online workout programs, 12 week programs for anyone that wants to get into the gym. Perfect. Amazing. Thank you so much, Johnny. It's been great to catch up with you again. Thanks, uh, Judy. Hopefully my daughter will be bringing in better protein options that you might actually <laughs> fancy in the future. <laughs> yes okay. <laughs> great thank you again uh, and i'll catch up with you again soon see you johnny all right bye -bye. thank you johnny bye <laughs>